Hey everyone, welcome to the Wreath Network here on Try to Hack Me. I'm Dark, and today we're going to be going through the Wreath Network doing a step by step tutorial to help everyone that wants to complete it actually go all the way through it. That being said, let's go ahead and dive right in. So, as we can see from the network overview, this is a fairly simple network that is designed to show us how we can start pivoting and start exploring uh, networks from more of an advanced uh, pen tester point of view, yet still keeping it simple enough that this is this is very doable for anyone that wants to go all the way through it. So we can see the description for the room, learn how to pivot through a network by compromising a public facing web machine and tunneling your traffic to access other machines in Wreath's network. Uh, this is actually a really common scenario for an uh, external pen test that you compromise a, a web app in some sort of way that you might gain remote code execution or some sort of data exposure um, and eventually are able to get onto that machine itself. Now that machine obviously is not going to have your pen testing tools on it so you need a way to actually access the private company network that that might be connected to or maybe the DMZ, the uh, demilitarized zone there that um, you otherwise don't have access to just from an external perspective. So we're going to go ahead and explore that and see how we can go ahead and uh, conquer that process. So first things first, we need to go ahead and start the network. In this specific case, it looks like the network is ready and waiting for us. Um, this will show how much time is left. If the network isn't active or no one's actually using it, the network will go to sleep. So keep that in mind, especially for pivoting, that you do need to keep an eye on this timer. If you have the alerts on for Try Hack Me, the little browser alerts, they will warn you when machines are going to be turned offline. And I believe there are also alerts for the network as well. Here we can also see the reset button. So if uh, there, so it looks like when two people vote, the network will reset to its default state. So if maybe a machine just isn't working uh, or there's some other issue, you can vote to reset up here and maybe someone else that is on the network is going to have the same issue as you. So you can just get it reset pretty easily. Let's go ahead and dive into task one, introduction. Wreath is designed as a learning resource for beginners with a primary focus on pivoting, working with the Empire C2, so the command and control framework, simple antivirus evasion techniques, and a couple more things. Uh, the following topics will also be covered, albeit more briefly. Code analysis, so we have Python and PHP, so learning how to actually be able to read that and start getting an understanding of what's actually going on. Locating and modifying public exploits. Simple web app enumeration and exploitation. Git repository analysis. Simple Windows post exploitation techniques. Command line access, or command line interface rather, CLI, firewall administration. Uh, so on CentOS and Windows, cross compilation techniques, code wrapper programs, simple exfiltration techniques, and then formatting a pen test report. This will be taught in the course of exploiting the Wreath network. Uh, this is fantastic, especially if you're trying to get into being a uh, pen tester overall. Uh, when you are doing a lot of your work, it's going to be against corporate networks. So having a nice condensed practice like this, this is a lot of topics that are really, really going to be beneficial. This is designed as almost a sandbox environment to follow up along with the teaching content. The focus will be on the above teaching points rather than the initial access and privilege escalation exploits. Contrary to other boxes on the platform where the focus is on the challenge. So we're gonna be talking about the process more than anything. A zip file containing the tools demonstrated throughout the, this room is attached to the task. That said, whilst these will work, it would be advisable to download the latest version of these tools as instructed by the task during your progression throughout the content, rather than relying on the provided archive. The uh, password for this zip file is wreath network. This network is designed for beginners, but assumes basic competence in the Linux command line and fundamental hacking methodology. And it looks like we have a hot link here for Linux one. This is the Linux fundamentals room. If you haven't done that prior to attempting this network and are maybe a little bit rocky with Linux and maybe not the most comfortable with the command line, highly, highly recommend checking out that room. It's a series of three rooms that are meant to get you up and running very quickly with the command line. The ability to read and write a little code will also be useful. Any other knowledge will be linked throughout the tests. If you need help, please feel free to ask in the TryHackMe Discord. There is a channel set up for, the per, uh, for this purpose 
in the help section there. So you can check out the help section within the Discord, and you can ask questions just specifically about the Wreath Network in case you get stuck. And believe me, the Try Hack Me Discord is a wonderful place to ask questions. Sometimes you need to be a little bit patient because most of the time the people answering questions are volunteers. So just keep that in mind. It can take a little bit. Doing research on your own is always advised, but if you're ever just hard stuck, the Try Hack Me Discord is the place to be. As this network is shared amongst a number of people, it goes without saying, please don't mess things up for others in the network. There are no password changes required in any tasks and no files need uh, deleted. At various stages in this network, it will be necessary to upload files and tools to the remote box. Please upload these in the format toolname-username. So for example, socat dash Mirland Oracle, or I would do socat slash dark. Uh, or shell slash Mirland Oracle dot ASPX, etc. to avoid overriding work belonging to anyone else. In short, don't be a troll, be respectful, and have fun. With this network being free, we really want to focus on that, so please be respectful of other users. We understand sometimes things happen, but again, we want to make sure that everyone can enjoy the network. With that being said, let's get started. So we'll go ahead and mark this as completed, since we've read the introduction, and we'll move into task two, accessing the network. Now, one quick note for the sake of this video, I'm going to be going through just these introduction tasks. The next video is going to be starting on the uh, task five in enumeration and so on and so forth. So we'll go ahead and go back to task two. Before we get into the content, we need to know how to access the network. Whether you are using the attack box or a local machine, so maybe just your own Kali Linux machine to connect to the TriHackMe network, you will need to use OpenVPN with a connection pack specifically designed for this network. Your normal connection pack for Try Hack Me will not work. If you are using a local machine, then you will need to download a configuration pack from the access page. If you are a subscriber and are using the attack box, then you will be able to find this connection pack in a directory on your desktop. This will be automatically connected when the attack box starts. If you are not subscribed, then you will need to download the connection pack as normal, copy and paste the contents into a file on the attack box, then connect as you would on a local VM. So you can still do this even if you're a free user with the free attack box, you just need to copy it into the clipboard. Um, I demonstrate this in the video over the tutorial room. So if you're not familiar with how to copy things in and out, take a look at that video. It, it will be on the official Try Hack Me YouTube channel and I'll try to have it linked in the video description below. Note, you are encouraged to use your own VM when attacking the Wreath network. The content in this network will be difficult to cover in the time available with a single attack box and the persistence of a local VM will be highly advantageous. Note, whenever you turn on your attack box, it does reset. So that's why using your own VM can be really advantageous. Otherwise, I recommend just being aware of what you need, uh, keeping an eye on that time, be really careful, especially with the free attack box and we having an hour. It can be very tough to get all the way through this and you will have to backtrack and redo work quite a bit, quite a number of times with that. So having the, uh, the subscriber attack box or your own Kali Linux machine can be great. Equally, certain situations, or certain sections rather, such as the Empire section, will be difficult to perform in the attack box. If you don't have a local Kali VM, pre-built versions can be found for VMware or VirtualBox. However, installing manually tends to be more reliable if you are comfortable doing so. On the Access page, click the Network tab and then select Wreath from the drop-down menu. So you can see on the Access page, we have Machines and the Networks. On Networks, we can select specifically Wreath if you have access to something such as Throwback or Hollow or another one of the networks that are coming out on TryHackMe, you can select that there as well. Note, this will only appear if you've joined the room. If you are only viewing the room just now, make sure you click the Join button at the top right of this page. So you need to have joined the room for this to actually show up. Click on the green Download button, so right over here, on the Access page and save the configuration pack somewhere on your local machine. This does not work, or if this does not work, then you may have to click Regenerate or I click this uh, specific regenerate button first and then give it 10 seconds before attempting to download the pack. So give it just a little bit. We'll go ahead and mark that as completed since I've already got my connection pack. I'm going to be attempting most of this room through the attack box provided on the site. So if you are just following along with the attack box, just follow along with my videos. And even then it'll be the same thing that you're doing on your local Kali machine. Connecting to OpenVPN on Linux using either Kali or the attack box can be accomplished with the OpenVPN client. So if you've connected before to the Try Hack Me Network, this is the same thing. We can see that we're running sudo. This does need to be running as root, openvpn, and then just our config name. 
Note, this needs to be in the same directory that you are running this command from. Otherwise, it's going to say, hey, I see that you're trying to run OpenVPN, but I don't know where that config is. And it's probably going to say, <laughs> I'm not going to really work on the, uh, it, it just won't work. It'll throw out a lot of errors and it's going to get really upset with you. So just make sure that you do this from the same directory. And you can see that uh, your uh, wreath config is going to be downloaded with the naming schema of your username on the site, dash wreath dot OpenVPN. So an example command might be, so we have sudo openvpn mulind oracle dash wreath dot openvpn. And we can see that demonstrated down here below. This should give you access to the wreath network. We'll mark that as completed. Maybe, there we go. Without closing the connection, open a new terminal. Uh, you can use control uh, nt, that key combination will work in most cases to open up a new terminal. This is the easiest way, technically speaking, to run the OpenVPN client in the background while still being able to use the CLI. I highly recommend doing this in Tmux. I'm very, very biased in that way. I love Tmux. It's what I use in every single one of my videos just because it's so much easier to hop between tabs. However, just using terminal tabs works just as well. If you are interested in doing it the same way that I'm going to be doing just with Tmux, check out the Tmux room. Very easy to use. Uh, there is a video on that room as well, and it's one of the best ways to go throughout this. I'll mark that as completed. Controlling the network. The network has three states, running, stopped, and resetting. The current state can be, or it will be shown at the top right of the network box at the top of the page. So we can see that up here that currently it's running since someone else is currently on the network. Running means the network is fully operational and can be connected to at will. Stopped indicates that the network has gone to sleep. This happens when no one has pressed the extend button within a set time limit so as to prevent the network from being constantly running without, uh, with no one using it. So if no one's using it, it's going to go to sleep. It's going to just shut itself off. We don't want to leave machines running out in the cloud as that gets very expensive if no one's using that, especially with a free network like this. It can be restarted by pressing the start button. This does not reset the network back to a clean copy, so anything stored on the target should still be there. So keep in mind, it'll just turn down. It's not going to turn off. So if you have a, uh, for example, a beacon that's going to call back out to you with a machine starting with persistence, it should call back out to you in that way, as long as you have uh, the same IP for your connection. The three buttons below the network can be used to control this functionality. And again, we talked about that just a little bit. So we have start, extend, if it's going to go to sleep, and then reset. The start button resets the network once stopped. The extend button prevents the, button, or the network from going to sleep, and reset just resets it. So we need two users in the network to reset the button. This prevents a single per person from spamming resets. And I think this might be changed to five, so just keep that in mind. Uh, we've done that just so that people don't lose their work constantly. Finally, the network uptime field at the bottom right of the network indicates how long the network has been awake for. This is not necessarily the time since the last reset. And we can see that if we scroll up, there we go. So we have our network uptime. It looks like it's been up for an hour and 40 minutes in my specific case. Again, that's because someone else is attempting the network. I think one of the other testers is currently working as I'm just getting the intro videos recorded. So more mark that is complete and move into task three, backstory. All right, backstory. Out of the blue, an old friend from university, uh, Thomas Reith, calls you after several years of no contact. You spend a uh, few minutes catching up before he reveals the real reason he called. So I heard you got into hacking. That's awesome. I have a few servers set up at my home for projects. I was wondering if you might like to access them. You take a moment to think about it before deciding to accept the job. It's for a friend, after all. Turning down his offer of payment, you tell him, I'll do it. And we can go ahead and mark that as complete and move into task four once it marks as complete, maybe. There we go. I didn't have it clicked in the window. And we'll talk about the brief. Thomas has spent, sent over the following information about the network. There are two machines on my home network that host uh, projects and stuff I'm working on in my own time. One of them has a web server that's port forwarded. So that's your way in if you can find a vulnerability. It's servicing a website that's pushed to my Git server from my own PC for version control, then cloned to the public facing server. See if you can get into these. My PC is also on that network, but I doubt you'll be able to get in as that has protections turned on. 
doesn't run anything vulnerable, and can't be accessed by the public-facing section of the network. Well, I say PC. It's technically a repurposed server because I had a spare license uh, lying around, but same difference. From this, we can take away the following pieces of information. There are at least three machines on the network. There is at least one public-facing web server. There is a self-hosted Git server somewhere on the network. The Git server is internal, so Thomas may have pushed sensitive information to it. That's very common for a company network that you can find sensitive information potentially on internal websites like that. There is a PC running on the network that has an antivirus installed, meaning we can hazard a guess that it like the it, that it is likely to be Windows. Uh, it's very uncommon to find an antivirus running on Linux. Um, sometimes you will. It just depends on what antivirus uh, the company is using. But the sounds of the this is likely to be a uh, server variant of Windows, which might work in our favor. And the assumed Windows PC cannot be accessed directly from the web server. This is enough to get started. Note, you're encouraged to treat this network as a penetration test. So, for example, uh, take notes and screenshots of every step and write a full report at the end, especially if you're not familiar with writing such reports. Reports will not be marked, but the act of writing them is good practice for any professional work or certifications you may do in the future. If you have to do any interviews, having a report like this, especially a full proper report, is wonderful, especially if I was the one interviewing you I'd say, yeah, show me it. I want to see what's going on. I want to see if you've actually done a pen test report. It shows me your writing skill. It shows me that you are familiar with what a report should look like for a professional pen test. And it shows me that you are really serious about this job. There will be more information on the actual report writing in the debrief and report task. But for now, just focus on extensive, or extensive notes and screenshots. Very common for a pen test. Uh, just to take extensive notes and screenshots. If you are not comfortable uh, taking notes, have a look into Cherry Tree or Notion. Notion is what I personally recommend, is it's what I use as hierarchical uh, note-taking applications and focus on documenting every step of the process. You should be able to refer to your notes and know exactly what you did and why you did it. This room is written in a way that encourages easy note-taking. So note down your kill chain as you go along and take lots of screenshots. Again, emphasis on lots and lots of screenshots. Reports can be submitted to the room as write-ups in the format specified in the questions of the debrief and report task. The first five high-quality reports, or write-ups rather, submitted will be featured at the end of this task. Let's go. So we can go ahead and mark that as complete. And then before we start, if you're using Kali, make sure it's up to date. Always a good thing to do. I've actually had this recently bite me in the butt where I had a uh, tool, uh, I think it was Linpeas specifically, that I had it very out of date and I just figured, oh, it's Linpeas. It's never, it, it's not updated really often. Um, it, it was out of date. It didn't check for something and I didn't find something that I should have. So make sure you update, make sure you update early, make sure you update often and make sure that you have screenshots, especially, or uh, rather snapshots of your uh, machine, especially if it's a VM, because sometimes things can just randomly break. This should not be necessarily a attack box, it's just kept up to date, we maintain that, so you don't need to worry about that. That is going to do it for task 4. When we come back in the next video, we're going to go through task 5, web server enumeration, but until next time, happy hacking!